I've been asked the question, do angels also help or work with animals as well as humans? Um, yes, they do. And in many ways it is easier for them to work with animals than with humans. One of the problems an angel encounters when it tries to work with a human is that um, the essence of an angel is often very frightening or crushing to a human. Humans are very individualized and we have memories. We realize who we are, what we are, and we tend to like it. We, in a way, are perpetuating our patterns, our habits. Like, I'm a man, so therefore I behave like a man, and because I have behaved like a man, I will behave more like a man or feel more like a man in the future. So we basically have a little seed that continues to grow and grow and grow. And this is how we grow, how we evolve, how we move ourselves. And an angelic being is of course uh, not following this same pattern. It is not perpetuating itself incrementally, uh, but rather it is brushing everything aside and gets a fresh download, you could say, or a fresh update, like how should I be now? Okay, do I need to be the next version? Then I will be the next version. So it is more of a monolithical thing, like an angel is, <laughs> and he has been created in a certain way. And if he is no longer useful, he disappears. If an angel should exist, a new one will be created. And um, to us, this idea of being swept aside when you're no longer needed and being put into place just to perform a specific job is a very terrifying idea. And so our very essence tends also to recoil because of our own attachment to our own method of progression uh, from the essence of an angel. This is also why it is often described in uh, in literature that people are very afraid when they encounter an angel and the angel has to explain them like don't be afraid I'm not going to do anything to you but it's a very natural thing the other thing is also that because the energy of an angel the vibration you could say is very high um, it tends to imprint itself onto everything um, so you could say an angel is very much like a fire. It is transmuting everything and turning everything, which is in a way base matter, into light and energy. So ex being exposed to an angel also burns up your own energy body. You start to evaporate and your energies become higher, but also what you are, all your structures are in a way destroyed, burned up. So you can tell by looking at a person's energy body if they have been in contact with an angel or not, because the energy body will have, in a way, energetical burn scars from the presence of the angel. So it's very easy to, uh, to check for that once you know your, what you're looking for. It also makes the presence of an angel very difficult to bear for a long time, because the more intense the contact with the angel, the more damage will be incurred. And ultimately the person will either die or go insane or um, yeah, lose yeah, coherence of their energy body. So this is often also why angels manifest themselves, they give the message and they're gone again. Because they realize that their hanging around is rather counterproductive if they choose to manifest themselves or direct their energy to one thing. Um, so also the very nature of the angel is destructive to us. It's important to note that this is not necessarily the desire of the angel to destroy us. Um, because of this, often angels will not manifest themselves directly, but indirectly. For instance, through the use of intermediaries, which can be different deities or people or other spirits, or through animals and nature. The nice thing about animals and nature is that they are generally much more resilient 
uh, when it comes to their energy bodies than humans are. They have a more simple energy body, which is better able to repair itself, to regenerate itself, than a human energy body is, because it is less complex. So an angel giving its attention to an animal or a tree won't, yeah, will still create damage, but the damage will heal more quickly and will leave less traces. Um, and this makes animals very um, good messengers or tools for angels to use. Also the animals themselves and the trees themselves, they also have a spiritual path to which their spirit is following just like humans. So to the angel there is really no difference. The angel is not interested in form, it is interested in essence. What are you to God? And from their perspective we're all kind of like lost sheep trying to find our way, whether we're in the form of a real sheep or of a human. And uh, that's maybe as a human we evolve more quickly than a sheep does. From the time scale of an angel it doesn't matter. Time is basically infinite as long as there needs to be. And the difference in speed between a human and the sheep to them is also very little difference because ultimately we're talking about periods of tens of thousands of years. If you look at it through sequential time for a person to really evolve their consciousness so it starts approaching uh, reunification with the divine. So, so what if you're a sheep in one life and a human in another? doesn't tell much about the evolution of the spirit. The other thing is also that plants, by virtue of yeah, uh, being very used to being eaten, being nibbled upon, being uh, wind blown or lightning struck all the time, they are not so afraid of damage. They're very used to being damaged a little bit because there's always little bugs eating them and all these things like this happening to them. So also an angel manifesting or using a tree, yeah, to the tree it is not a disturbing thing. Um, for animals it is very much about instinct. Most animals have a social order and it is very normal for a dog to look towards the alpha pair. Uh, what shall we do? What is going on? I will follow them. And the same with wolves and the same with many animals. They tend to have parents or at least one parent who's rearing them and uh, who they follow, who they respect, who they trust implicitly. And often when an animal encounters a, a spirit which is of a higher vibration, higher nature, including an angel, then it will have a natural tendency to follow its instinct and to say like, okay, this is a higher being. Um, Let's do what it says. Let's follow its advice. While humans being, well, rather more um, self-guiding and individualized, we tend to try to follow our own thoughts rather than simply surrender uh, to the angel or surrender to the impulses of the angel. Um, this also makes it necessary for angels often to be a little bit more heavy-handed in how they present their energies to humans than how they would do it to an animal. Animals are easier uh, to work with, they follow more easily, they accept more easily, they're more sensitive, they're more aware of subtle energies, of their emotions, of their feelings, of their instincts. So they're easier to guide than humans are. Um, but unfortunately animals don't have the same amount of impact on the world, they don't have the same amount of power to change the world, to change society as humans do. So often when angels work with animals it is actually to have an effect on the human world. So they can inspire an animal to give off certain signals, certain signs to save a person, to kill a person, to help to yeah, manifest the path of human society. But another thing angels also do they provide places for animals where it is easy for them to uh, to die, to cross over, uh, for where it is safe for them to grow up, to be inspired, to be sick. Um, so you find in 
many natural habitats, there are places which have very sacred energies, very holy energies. And these energies have often been placed there by angels so that the animals which need them uh, can go to such places to receive these impulses. In the same way as humans build temples, build churches, uh, the animals have their own temples and churches provided for by angels. So, yeah, I hope this explains a little bit the relationship between angelic beings and the animals.